Hey, thanks for tuning in. This is Joe from HomestudioCorner.com, and today I want to talk about bouncing. Uh, that may be a foreign concept to some of you, may be very familiar to others, uh, but when you're first getting into Pro Tools, or any DAW for that matter, uh, the first thing you want to do after recording, of course, is get yourself a mix and uh, take that out to your car, put it on a CD, listen to it on your iPod, and um, if you've never done it before, then that can be a bit of a challenge. So in this session here, we have two audio tracks. There's a stereo acoustic guitar. But you could easily have 10, 20, 40 tracks of audio. And you want to mix that down to one uh, stereo file. And that's the file that you can burn to your CD. You can import that into iTunes and all that. Now, that's a simple thing to do. But if you're not familiar with the terminology, you may be searching around the menus in Pro Tools trying to figure out how do I get this out? How do I get a mix? So I want to show that. It's a little more basic. Uh, there are two ways to do this. There's bounce to disk, and there's record to disk. Bounce to disk is the main way to do it that most people use, or at least starting out use. And that's basically where you come into the file menu, and you select bounce to disk, and it basically bounces whatever you have selected, all your tracks, bounces those out to a single stereo file. It just basically records it out of Pro Tools into a file that you can then take and copy and do whatever you want with. Now, the way to do that, uh, the, well, I guess the second way is record to disk, and I'm going to discuss that in the next video. Uh, that's the way that I prefer, but it's a little more in-depth and isn't necessary to get bounces. It's just I have a few reasons why I do it, and I'll just cover that in another video because uh, otherwise this video would be way too long. Okay, so the typical way to bounce to disk is you create some markers here, and that's simply done by hitting enter on your keyboard, and you can name it whatever you want. And you select your start marker and end marker, put them where you want them, and then simply click the first one, hold down shift, and click the second one uh, to make your selection. You can also make your selection simply by selecting the regions. As you can see, these arrows here will follow whatever selection you have here. So let's just, for argument's sake, say this is our song between the start and end points. Now, we want to bounce this. This is the section that we want to bounce out and put into iTunes and put on our iPod. Uh, there's one more thing before we go to bounce. This is a 24-bit session. And when you're dealing in 24-bit, and if I want to bounce this down and put it into a CD, a CD is 16-bit. So I need to add a dither plugin. Now, I'll write an article about dither and why we use it. Um, but just trust me that there's some underlying things going on. You're taking 24 bits and you're reducing it down to 16 bits. And sometimes that can introduce noise at lower levels. So what Dither does is it introduced, introduces another type of noise that counteracts that and allows for a smooth transition, especially down in the lower volumes. You don't hear any of those digital artifacts. So since we're going to 16 bit, it gives you some options for different bit rates to um, Dither down to. And we're gonna set, select 16. And you don't hear it, it's very low level noise, but it needs to be there uh, before you bounce. So we put that on our master fader because that's going across the entire mix. And as you can see, everything's playing back properly. Okay. Now, the way to bounce. We have our selection, and we come up to File, Bounce to Disk. And that may seem like some kind of wacky terminology. Basically, we're just bouncing this to uh, a hard drive, somewhere on our hard drive. And we get this window. Now, these are all your options for bouncing, and it's usually set up how you want it, but you need to make sure it's all correct. Uh, your bounce source, this can be any output on your interface and any bus. Now, typically, you're going to use your main outputs. That's where everything's being fed. That's what you want to listen to. File type, um, there's a lot here. Some versions of Pro Tools allow you to use MP3. If you're doing a video, you can bounce it as a QuickTime file. Uh, but most of the time for music, you're just going to bounce a WAV file. That's the seems to be the standard. For format, this is a bit um, where a few people can get off track. Um, uh, a friend of mine was doing, he's just getting into Pro Tools and was doing bounces and unknowingly was doing mono bounces, didn't realize that his bounces weren't in stereo. And it was because of this, this setting was set to mono, which gives you just a summed mono track. Uh, the options here are mono, which is one file that's sums the left and right channels together. Multiple mono gives you two files. So it gives you a left file and a right file. And that's good for if you want to take those into another editor or, or a mastering program or something like that. 
But for our purposes, we want to use stereo interleaved. This produces one file that has all the left and right material. So this is the type of file you put on a CD or put into iTunes to make it to an MP3. Uh, bit depth, we discussed that already. We're going to go down to 16-bit. This session is at 44.1. Um, so that's the, um, the sample rate that you want to go at to do a CD. Um, if you're recording at something like 48 um, and you go down to 44.1 or go up or whatever, uh, this will allow you to select the conversion quality. And typically you want to go with the Tweakhead, which is the slowest but the best sounding uh, sample rate conversion. But I like to record at 44.1 so I don't have to convert the sample rate. So if I select that, you'll see that this option here is no longer available because it's already at the right sample rate. The only other option here is convert after bounce or during bounce. Um, I've not seen any real performance issues, differences. I'm sure there are. I've not seen any issues that are worth, you know, wasting too much time worrying about. And then there's import after bounce, and um, that allows you to import it back into the session, but only if it's the same format. So 24-bit, 44.1, it'll let you import, but at 16, it won't. Uh, and now all we have to do is hit bounce, and this window comes up, and basically just allows us to select where we want to bounce this to. So uh, we can bounce it to our desktop. We can bounce it to to the same file, the same hard drive, and same folder as the session. And as soon as we give it a name and hit save, what's going to happen is a window will pop up here, and it'll say, you know, it's bouncing to disk and it will basically go through and play the song in real time, play that selection. So let's just try that real quick. I'll show it to you. Now, I canceled that because we don't need to listen to the whole thing. But some people complain that Pro Tools does a real-time bounce. But to me, that's a benefit. Um, as you can see, that timer is counting down. It doesn't do it offline. It doesn't do it any faster than the minute and you know 50 seconds that that selection is. And to me, that's a good thing, because if it did it offline, I may not be able to hear any mistakes that were there. I like to listen to my bounce as it bounces. It's kind of the final check to make sure everything sounds right. So that's Bounce to Disk. Tune in later this week. I'll be doing a video on Record to Disk, which is another option that gives you a little more flexibility, and it's what I prefer to do most of the time. Uh, so thanks for watching. Again, this is Joe from HomestudioCorner.com. If you have any questions, if you're watching this on YouTube or uh, Viddler or any of the other video sites, head back over to my website and uh, leave your question in the comment section there, and I'll be happy to answer it. Uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again soon.